Hi there and welcome to PhD at Living. Today continues our discussion on newborn nutrition and we're talking formula. Specifically, we're looking at three different kinds of Similac formula because that's what Amazon sent and it's apparently just that easy to get publicity on this channel if you send me something for free. Remember from our last video that we're looking at four specific things comparing breast milk to infant formula carbohydrates, proteins, fats slash fatty acids, and minerals. The minerals are probably in some ionic form that's close enough to the one found in breast milk, and let's be honest, that's inorganic chemistry, and I don't really care about it much, so we're not going to talk about it. Let's jump right in. We were sent Similac Pro Total Comfort, easy to digest, gentle protein, and prebiotics, Similac Pro Sensitive for fussiness and gas due to lactose sensitivity, and Similac Pro Advance, our closest formula to breast milk. Now, full disclosure, I wasn't paid or endorsed by Similac in any way for this video, though I certainly wouldn't turn it down if anybody out there is watching. Anywho, I took a look at the back of the ingredients list and wrote down everything up to the point where it said less than 2%. So we've got 98% of the stuff in here accounted for. As it turns out, that wasn't that many ingredients, so it made it really easy to compare among the three formula types and with breast milk. God, I love when a plan comes together. Carbohydrates. Remember from our last video that the carbohydrates in breast milk are about two-thirds lactose, one-third human milk oligosaccharides, or HMOs. Here we can see the carb breakdown in each of our three infant formula variants. In the advanced, we have non-fat milk and lactose, in the sensitive, corn syrup and sugar, and in the comfort, corn maltodextrin and sugar. Because the pro-advance is supposed to be closest to breast milk as possible, it makes sense that there's some milk product and lactose in here as our heavy carb constituents. In the other two, the sugar I'm assuming is just sucrose, disaccharide of glucose and fructose. It's common table sugar, enough said. Which brings us to a short discussion between the difference of corn syrup and corn maltodextrin. Contrary to what Bud Light would have you believe, there's nothing inherently bad or dangerous about corn syrup. And even though the name sounds similar, it's fundamentally different from its big brother, high fructose corn syrup, which, totally deservedly, has somewhat of a bad rap. Essentially, the corn syrup is derived from corn starch, very long polymeric polysaccharide, bunch of different sugar units there. What happens with the corn syrup is it's hydrolyzed. Water's added, those glycosidic bonds in that corn starch are broken, and the chain length gets shorter. In the European Union, corn syrup is called glucose syrup, so that kind of tells you what the ingredient is. And as far as I can tell, corn syrup glucose is the same as rice syrup glucose or glucose from potatoes or really the glucose from whatever mother eats and makes as half of her lactose and breast milk. The maltodextrin, instead of being a polysaccharide, is an oligosaccharide, meaning our unit of glucoses are ever so slightly shorter. For the maltodextrin, generally speaking, our number of glucose units, all linked together by alpha-1,4 bonds, by the way, is about 3 to 20 glucose units. In the European Union, any maltodextrin above 20 glucose units is considered glucose syrup. So really the difference between corn syrup and corn maltodextrin is not much. If anything, because the chain length in the maltodextrin is shorter than the chain length in our corn syrup, you can say that the maltodextrin is probably easier for baby to digest, which makes sense that it's in the total comfort formula because that's what it says on the daggone box. Protein! Interesting little development here. We have whey protein concentrate, milk protein isolate, and whey protein hydrosylate. Let's tackle the first part here up top. I'm assuming the milk protein in the sensitive formulation is more whey than it is casein, because remembering to our last video, casein can be more difficult to digest because it solidifies in the stomach. Why you would want something that's harder to digest in your pro-sensitive formulation doesn't really add up to me, so my guess is this milk protein is probably more similar to the whey protein in the other two, so we can kind of exclude that. Which brings us to our difference among the concentrate, isolate, and hydrosylate. The concentrate and isolate are the same protein, but in the concentrate, fats and lactose are left in that are extracted out in the isolate. This makes sense on both sides because the advance tries to be close to breast milk, so the lactose is going to be in there already. Why spend the time and energy taking it out? And in the isolate, we don't want the lactose in there because some babies might be somewhat intolerant to it. So having that pure protein in there, also kind of a good bet. The hydrosylate, on the other hand, totally different experience. That has protein that is hydrolyzed. Isn't it great that we have an analogy for this like two minutes ago? The concentrate and the isolate are much more like corn syrup, where the hydrosylate is much more like maltodextrin. Much like those carbohydrate glycosidic bonds are broken with water, each of the peptide bonds in the amino acids of the proteins in our hydrosylate can also be cleaved. <laughs> 
Nutritionally, this all shakes out pretty much the same. However, the hydrosylate, much like the corn maltodextrin, is easier to absorb and digest, which again, hey, is in the easier to digest formulation. So that one checks out. Fats and fatty acids. Not a lot of differences here. Three components in each of the three formulations, high oleic safflower oil, soy oil, and coconut oil. Remembering in our breast milk, we have lots of triglycerides of palmitic acid and oleic acid, and a splash of linoleic and alpha-linolenic acid, which are metabolized to become arachidonic acid and docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, respectively. Wouldn't you know it, probably a lot of oleic acid in this high oleic safflower oil, so good to go on that one. The soy oil I'm assuming is soybean oil, so it's got triglycerides of the linoleic and linolenic acid, oleic acid, stearic acid, palmitic acid, nothing really crazy happening there. But in our coconut oil, we start to see some different stuff. We have a lot of saturated acids in our coconut oil, so no double bonds. Remembering our palmitic acid is 16 carbons, in our coconut oil we have a decent amount starting at eight. So at eight carbons, caprylic acid, 10 decanoic acid, 12 lauric acid, 14 myristic acid, back to 16 our palmitic acid. And no, I didn't make all those up at this exact moment, okay? Why do we add in only two carbons? Well, it turns out that the body likes to cleave things for metabolic purposes in two carbon chunks, and that one was buried in the biochemistry part of my undergrad portion of the basement of my mind palace. So, might not be 100% accurate, but I like it. That was all an extremely long way of saying nutritionally and chemically, the oils in formula not that different from the oils in breast milk. Notice anything conspicuously absent here? Maybe 2 prime FL? As it turns out, the 2 prime FL is in each of those formulations, but it's in that less than 2% of the ingredient list, so we didn't really cover it back here. That's okay though, because 2 prime FL is not a huge constituent in breast milk anyway, so nothing to get concerned about. Finally, and only because I'm a masochist at drawing ridiculous structures, the yellow pigment lutein is added for eye development. Just look at this monster. Conjugated double bond system out the wazoo. No surprise, this one's colored. Lutein is also a xanthophyll, which has nothing to do with anything except that's a really awesome name. Xanthophyll. Final big huge flashing disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional, I'm just some guy on YouTube. Please check out the sources of information in the description of these videos, read some peer-reviewed scientific literature, and make up your own mind. Remember folks, that's what a PhD at living is all about. That being said, I feel good about how I represented the molecules and relevant chemistries involved here, but again, I have no idea how any of that would react in your body or your baby's body, so please make your own decisions. And that, my friends, brings this magical memory tour to a close. See you next time! I see you're drinking 1%. Is that because you think you're fat? <laughs>